Harper here. Mom wants me to thank you for donating to my little brother's rescue and answer your question a little bit. She says she can always talk with you more because it's a little bit more of an in-depth conversation. And unfortunately, there isn't just one good answer for your situation without assessing them and kind of looking at their behavior and why they're doing it uh, and kind of going from there. A good starting point would actually be, though, to limit their freedom and prevent them from racing to the fence with long lines or leashes. Does this mean you have to do it forever? No, but right now, the more freedom that they have, the more mistakes they can make. And the more mistakes they can make, the more likely they are to repeat them since those mistakes make them feel better. So we want to limit their mistakes, and that's the first step. So we can guide them more appropriately if we have leashes or long lines on them that we can step on and that we can be out there with them in the beginning, especially before winter comes and we don't want to be out there. So in behavior modification, there are always two main goals. The first one is teaching obedience cues, like come when called or leave it, and that's where good classes or even private lessons with a good professional trainer from a fear and force free facility can help. And then two, changing the emotional state of the dog. So that they aren't worried or reacting anymore. So the basic obedience cues I like to teach are come when called or leave it, and also quiet, especially for those outside areas that you're talking about. And changing the emotional state of the dog, I have to be outside with them. I've got to be next to the fence, I've got to be having really high value tasty treats, and I've got to be redirecting them into what I want them to do, instead of just telling them no and what I don't want them to do. So. Basically, my mom has fear and force free um, videos online under the Awesome Paws Academy YouTube channel, which I'll comment on below on how to teach some of those basic cues in fun ways. And that way your dogs can truly learn them. The second step, I want you to stand out by the fence and keeping them on drag lines so you can step on them, of course, and have tasty bits of chicken or cheese or something that they absolutely go gaga over. So when the dogs come out, you can show the tasty treats and help them uh, redirect basically onto you and show them that the dogs coming out mean awesome things come if they look at you, if they're quiet, if they recall, or even if they just simply leave it. Eventually, enough repetitions will build up habit, they'll actually change how they see the other dogs coming out, and you won't have to use long lines and you won't have to be out there. But another great booklet that we recommend for multi-dog households is called Feeling Outnumbered by Patricia McConnell. It gives a great outline of starting exercises to help with basic control over those multi-dog households, and to help teach them impulse control, which is what they're lacking if they're barking and racing along that fence line and not listening. So let my mom know if you want more of a phone consult session, and we can go from there. Otherwise, check out that booklet, maybe try some of those tips, and look at some of those videos online and see if you can't get started. And then if those still aren't helping, give me, you know, give us a call, and we'll actually go ahead and go from there for you. As always, happy training!